For at TV, the world is thinking. You know, after September 11th, President Bush and many people in his administration, my former colleague Condoleezza Rice and others, appeared to be convinced that as President Bush declared on the uh, 20th anniversary of the creation of the National Endowment for Democracy, November 6, 2003, in a speech to NED, that 60 years of American policy, I'm paraphrasing only slightly, um, supporting uh, stability at the expense of freedom brought us neither freedom nor stability. And so he announced on that day a new forward strategy for freedom in the Middle East. And people in the region were euphoric uh, in response to it. Uh, and then what happened, happened, as you've noted. We got elections in Palestine, Hamas won. We got elections in Lebanon, Hezbollah did very well. We got elections in Iraq and between the Shiite Islamists and the Sunni Islamists, uh, the Islamists, you know, uh, got a majority of all the votes cast. Uh, and we got elections in Egypt uh, and in the first two rounds of the Egyptian parliamentary elections, 88 members of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is half of all the Muslim Brotherhood candidates running in the election, won, won 20 percent of the seats in Parliament. And then the Bush administration, by the end of that horrible year for, quote, democracy, end quote, in the Middle East of 2005, had largely the reaction uh, you described. They thought, oh my God, democracy means the Islamists are going to win, uh, so we better back off from it. And they just walked away from it, really walked away from it. And people in the region became extremely bitter and felt betrayed. Now, um, this was really a bungling of um, the approach that should have been taken uh, and has landed us in the worst of all possible worlds. On the one hand, um, we have um, given democracy, quote unquote, something of a bad name in the region uh, by having pushed it in the way we did uh, in Iraq through the use of force. So democracy promotion in the region now is now seen as America imposing it by use of force. And on the other hand, we've sent the message that if we don't like the results of a competitive political process, we'll just walk away from it. So authoritarian leaders feel like they have a new lease on life, that the pressure is off. Mubarak feels once again very comfortable, comfortable enough um, to still be holding his presidential election opponent, someone who basically shares our values of a secular and liberal democracy, Ayman Nur, in prison. What are we doing? Egypt is getting over a billion dollars in aid from the United States, and Mubarak's presidential election opponent is sitting on totally ridiculous and trumped up charges in prison. And this after President Bush said in his, sec in his second inaugural address, these words, which by the way, were heard and heeded in the Middle East. When you stand up for freedom, we will stand with you. I wonder what Ayman Noor thinks about those words as he sits in ill health in his prison cell in Egypt. Uh, we have very little moral credibility in the Middle East now as a result of this hypocrisy. Uh, and I think what we needed then and need now is a new policy that's resolute on the one hand and honest on the other. The resoluteness has to be in being willing to stay the course uh, in the uh, search for freedom and just government in the Middle East. The honesty has to be in recognizing that they're not going to get there overnight. That right now um, there is a bifurcated playing field in most Arab states. There's the regime of Mubarak, uh, King Abdullah in Jordan, you pick your Arab autocrat. On the one hand, 
And there is the Islamists on the other hand. The Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, the Islamic Action Front in Jordan, whatever it might be. Um, there's a more complicated landscape in some states. In Lebanon, to be sure, in Morocco, uh, where the Islamists actually did not do well in the recent election and where you know, it's one of the two or three Arab countries that's most ready for a true democratic opening. But elsewhere, even the Democrats are saying, and said to me in Cairo last month, we are only asking for a gradual opening to democracy. We're not asking for democracy tomorrow. We don't even want democracy tomorrow because we need time to create a third alternative between the regime and the Islamists. Political parties that might be secular, that might be very moderately Islamist in orientation, looking to the model of the Justice and Development Party in Turkey, but they then need time to establish their platforms, to build their constituencies, to recruit followings, to raise money, to win elections at the local level and show that they can exercise power. And maybe during that period of gradual democratization, some might traverse the path of evolution that the political Islamists in Turkey have traversed that have led to the moderation of the Justice and Development Party in uh, Turkey. But the point is, there's no such evolution underway. And in uh, Egypt today, the Wasat Party, uh, which is a moderate Islamist party, is banned. And most of the uh, secular democratic parties are either banned or they're allowed to run and then their candidates are imprisoned after the elections.